We now have uh, some fun coming to us. How many of you like to shop? How many of you know that the people who are selling to you know all about you? They can predict what you're going to buy. They can cause you to buy it. And they can cause you to enjoy it and keep it. Well, some of that technology comes straight out of Israel. And we are excited today to bring up, to talk to us, a, a, a fulsome panel on analytics, smart pricing, and great e-commerce. We call this session Buyout. And I'd like to bring up our panelists, starting with Guy Horowitz from Deutsche Telekom to come and moderate. Noam Schwartz from SimilarWeb. Arya Spanya from Wiser. Shaul Weisband from Jafiti. Ed Gross from Evite. And we're very glad to bring up Wispa to join the panel as we talk about how fun it is to buy things and be sold. Joy. We'll all enjoy it. But is this music going to go away? It's brilliant. No, stand up. We're going to dance. Because, okay, the music is gone. So, um, no, I, I like the stand up, uh, you know, the, the idea. We can do that. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thanks for uh, coming back from break. And thanks for, uh, you know, giving us the time to give you some insights on where uh, shopping and e-commerce is going. Um, it's hard to compete with the panel we had before the break, and I, I'm not going to say why, but I think it's pretty clear. So uh, while we're not as um, good-looking as the previous panel, we'll try our best to uh, compensate on content. Um, now, I'm Guy Horowitz. I'm with a company called Deutsche Telekom Capital Partners, which is a venture capital firm backed by Deutsche Telekom, which is a large telecom operator um, and group. Um, and uh, I, in Israel, I'm based in Israel. I invest in Israeli technology. And typically, when people come to visit us in Israel or when people talk about the innovation scene in Israel, um, what they'll tell you is that Israelis are great in research and development and sometimes not that much on sales and marketing. So when we bring expertise from Israel and we do stuff in Israel that's related to sales and marketing, that's quite this thing, that's quite unique. And uh, I hope we're gonna learn from these guys how we can do it better. The other thing you, they'll tell you about Israel and Israelis is that we improvise quite well. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but I was called uh, upon to moderate this panel about 20 minutes ago, so um, I'm not 100% sure I can call all of those individuals by name and uh, explain what every company does, but we're going to explore that together, and I think um, you know, they're going to do the, the heavy lifting. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it very quickly to all of our panelists and ask them to introduce themselves briefly. Name, uh, title, what the company does in a sentence, so less than an elevator pitch, and um, also, and I, I'm going to connect that to one of my first questions, their personal hobby, one of or their most important hobby. Are you guys ready for that? That's also improvisation, right? So uh, please, take it from here. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ari. I'm CEO at Wiser. We help retailers uh, to be smart, like Amazon, with the SaaS uh, retail uh, optimization software. Uh, and in hobby, I started to learn kite surfing just a month ago, so uh, it's never too late, right? Hi, my name is uh, Nathaniel Teicher. Uh, I'm the co-founder of uh, Wispa. Uh, what we do, we create what we call the community, passion community marketplaces, where we identify people who want to buy, sell, and share their passion based on what they say on social network and we create a marketplace for them when they can exercise their passion. Um, my hobby is uh, rugby. It's already cost me four ligaments, but I'll keep going. 
Hi, my name is Shaul Wiseband. I'm a co-founder at Jiffity. We are a startup that creates innovative gifting solutions for retailers and brands, um, basically allowing shoppers to select an item and send it as a gift without having to know the recipient's shipping address or product details such as size. We allow the recipient to make all those decisions. Um, and we are the creator of the gift button that that can happen on any site or any platform uh, which is what we do with Evite here, which we allow the gifting directly on their platform. Um, my hobby is sports, playing, and watching. Hello. Uh, I was loud. Uh, my name is Ed Gross. I um, work for evite.com and run a revenue for them, so business development and sales. Uh, we are the largest online invitation company in the U.S., and I believe the world. Um, and I'd say my hobby, uh, well, I have a nine-week-old baby, so I say my hobby used to be uh, you know, playing, uh, playing instruments, uh, guitar, bass, and drums, but now it's probably changing diapers, so. Hello, my name is Noam Schwartz. I'm from SimilarWeb. I'm head of innovation in the company. SimilarWeb is a competitive intelligence platform that helps marketers and analysts look into websites and mobile apps and understand exactly what is their marketing tactics and act accordingly. It's some kind of an x-ray machine for mobile apps and websites, if you'd like. I used to play rugby also, and then I got hurt. So I stuck with... That's uh, what you mainly do in rugby. Yeah. I it also used to play. Uh, I knew you guys looked familiar, so that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I stuck with uh, I'm creating music. That's my hobby. Great idea, by the way. Right. So. Uh, I think it's amazing. We have more people on stage that have played rugby than uh, 8,200 uh, you know, veterans, right? Any one of you c comes from 8,200 or has any background in intelligence? You're all intelligent, right? But, uh, no. So, um, no, it's brilliant. And uh, for whoever is following sports, we, we have tough competition uh, considering if streaming works here, then someone might be watching the uh, Champions League. Um, and people, when they're watching uh, TV, they tend to get rather engaged. Uh, when people browse for stuff, when people look for stuff, um, you know, they're, they're typically comparing. They want to know to make sure that they're getting the price right, right? And they want to make sure that in, the, in Hebrew we say they're not freirim, yeah? They're not being suckered into a... Actually, you can pay a high price, but if your friend paid less, then you're a freir. So we, we, we don't want to do that. Um, you guys have decided to take upon one of the most, uh, let's say, to take upon Amazon, right? Amazon is the, the arch enemy when it comes to, uh, to shopping. Can you tell us a little bit, Arya, about uh, you know, your war against Amazon, why you've decided to, to, to do it, and how, are, how is it going? I mean, are you guys managing to fight Amazon? Sure, and uh, that's, that's uh, definitely the, the holy grail for a lot of retailers. Um, I, I started as a retailer, and um, my need was um, to find a way to automate competitive intelligence and know the prices of, of my competitors and so on. And uh, we found it as a very tedious task. So then we went on kind of approach, which is scratch our own niche, which is many good, well, many maybe good ideas started with. So solve your own problem. And. Um, Within two years, um, Wise Pricer, which was a, a simple tool, grew to Wiser. And the gist of Wiser is really to help retailers, in quote unquote, fight Amazon. But the fact is that 95% or above that are in terms of the, um, the retailers um, in the US do not have the capability or it's not in their wheelhouse. Um, all the big data analysis, all the um, uh, heavy lifting that Amazon, Walmart Labs, and uh, maybe Staples had, they just lack it. So the idea was to bring, to bring uh, kind of a know-how to level the play field, the retailing play field. And that's by uh, going to the guts of commerce. So that's going into pricing, uh, then you go to assortment and catalog, and then to uh, the inventory forecasting and analysis. So what to sell, where to sell, which price to sell it. And that is three elements that are, are relevant or prevalent from the dawn of retail. Fast forward to 2015, nothing has changed. That's the same, that's the same game. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Right. 
So anyone else feels like they have the urge to fight Amazon or Google or any of the big guys? I think you guys are kind of fighting Google head to head on some stuff, right? Uh, we're not exactly fighting Google. Uh, Google is a client of ours, also Amazon. And um, we help them fight each other, basically. Um, we help them understand what everybody, what everybody is really, yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah. Sell the product. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, you, you, collect, you guys collect a lot of data. I think you've got you know, millions in revenue, tens of millions in revenue, right? Yeah, that's Just right. Just from collecting data and making it available to these guys. So how does that work? So from 2007, we started collecting a very unique data, data, data source. It's called Clickstream, which is basically the anonymized footprints of a single user browsing habit. Um, you're going on a website, you're going on your, mobile, on your mobile device, you're browsing from a website to a website, you're opening an app, you're closing an app, you're creating a log. We collect it anonymously. Uh, we get it from a lot of add-ons and toolbars and SDKs and VPNs and partnerships with ISPs and with tens of millions of, uh, with hundreds of millions of users that, are, that we collect their data on a daily basis. We can create that platform, and website can use this this platform, this data, to understand what's going on in different websites. So, for example, if I want to look into a specific business or a specific website and understand what is his marketing st uh, strategy, where is the traffic coming from, what is the conversion rate, what people are actually doing in this website, in in if we're talking about e-commerce, so what is the most popular item, uh, how many people out of the total visitors in a specific website are actually going to the shopping cart and buying something. How many people are going to the thank you page? Um, what are the most popular keywords, the paid keywords, the organic keywords? Basically everything that the marketing department in an organization spends money on, we can help them optimize. Instead of just like spending money on stuff that, that won't work, we can tell them what's working and what's not. So this is how we help them compete. Right, so what's the most uh, popular baby product. Let's help Ed a little bit. I have no idea. There's so many can, customers. Can I search your database? You can search for a specific website or a specific app and expose it. Right. So if you want to understand what is the most popular, let's say, product on a specific, let's say, Babies or Us, you can see it. If you want to see what is the most popular TV show uh, on Netflix, you can do that also. Right, so you would not be competing with any of those search engines, you'd just be helping them optimize, right? Yeah, like, so Google, they have a product called Google Analytics, and that helps a website owner understand what's going on in his website. That's a BI platform. Right. We're a competitive intelligence platform, a CI platform. We help them lose, get the same level of data, but for different websites. Got it, cool. So, Shao, uh, you deserve some congratulations, right? You just raised your... First round? Is it your first round? It's our Series A, yes. Series A, yeah. So before that, it was not serious, right? Yeah, no, it was a seed. Yeah. Call it so, one. So you raised $3.3 .3 million, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, mothership of uh, Evite, right? So the, Ed money. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. guys are, are officially cousins now, right? Um, so that's not yet the $65 million that Similar Web has raised, but uh, it's still a lot a of money. Bit, so how is a young startup uh, going to use that money to become let's say as big as similar web, maybe bigger. What, what are the plans? The plans are definitely to, uh, to grow the company. Um, our goal was uh, really to reach the point today where we have a major brand using uh, our different solutions, which we've done, Evite being using our uh, gift market, uh, which was, has been an incredible uh, success. Um, that's why also Liberty Media, which owns Evite, came in and, and led the round. Uh, which, by the way, the Series A round, a round we did not close, um, so that we're more than happy to speak to further investors. There. <laughs> yeah. um, to answer your last question, I can tell you the most popular baby gift um, is from Babies R Us, and it is a diaper bag. Um, but, uh, and that's, it, we can get into the, to that data, and that's exactly what we're doing, and that's where we're seeing our growth, is we're creating a new layer of data for these retailers, working together with them, which is basically data on gifting, uh, which really did not exist until today, because if someone goes into any site like Sears and buys something and ends up giving it as a gift, they don't uh, specifically know that that's a gift. Um, and with our dedicated gift checkout, uh, beyond the conversion being much higher, uh, we collect all that data and allow them to understand suddenly what is being gifted, what is the nature of that gift, 
um, what are those price points for the gifts, and that's really kind of where we see our growth, and that's where the fund's going to be used also, is to, to create more of those cooperations and, uh, and understand, really kind of rethink the whole space of gifting and allow the retailers and brands to utilize that data and convert more shoppers into gifters. Right. J just out of curiosity, you need to add a button to the website, right? So whoever wants to have this gift button, that calls for a major design change. How are you going about to do that? Well, yes and no. It's, it's really, a, it's literally like we say, we always say that when we sit with a retailer or any website, you know, the second you say the I word, which is integration, then pretty much the conversation is over there. Um, so all our solutions are really built uh, that require zero integration. It is very similar to a, uh, to a social button, like the like button, but basically we enable commerce inside there. So that one line of code simply shows an extra button right next to the add the cart. It says send as a gift and then allows the shopper to simply put in an email address um, and send it with literally two clicks, and then the recipient receives a link to the gift and allows them to put in all the information. Um, so the truth is we really haven't seen, the, the pushback has really been, has been a lot less in terms of that because um, it's, it's a very simple widget, it's completely powered by us, it needs zero integration, um, and I can tell you that on a conversion rate when it comes to the regular e-commerce checkout, we see an incredibly higher rate um, in terms of uh, successful checkouts. So it's definitely worth it on, in terms of the platform and for the retailer themselves. Great. So uh, diaper bag, right? Diaper bag, if you're looking for a good baby gift, yes. Right, and when the baby grows up, then you want to sell that diaper bag, right? As a used diaper bag. Uh, how many of you people here have been using Craigslist? Have ever used Craigslist? Okay, that's a nice number. Craigslist has been around for centuries, right? Like since uh, Stone Age. It looks like it's Stone Age, but it hasn't been disrupted. No one has been able to kind of, you know, build a better Craigslist. Uh, but there is something happening in the uh, exchange or the uh, secondhand sales market owing to apps and location-based stuff. Uh, Wispa is, is playing that market, right? Can you tell us a little bit what you're doing and how you differentiate from all the other guys who are trying to pretty much do, you know, this kind of thing? Um, so what we what we understand that um, you know you, you can go to Craigslist or you can go to eBay and try to find a product, uh, but sometimes buying a product is just part of your fun. If you're part of a passionate community, uh, for example, people who collect classic cars or people who, who collect stamps or uh, people that are they have a passion to run a certain product. So part of the passion and part of your fun is not only buying and selling, but talk about it with like-minded people. So you want to share your experience. Sometimes you want to share your collection. Um, sometimes you, you want to find the best deal from someone that you know what he's talking about, which means it's from your community. And you don't have any real way to do it right now. You can go to eBay or you can go to Credit and, and buy something, um, but then you will try to upload it to to Instagram or talk about it in, in, in Facebook. Uh, so you have a fragmented uh, experience, which is all against what you're passionate about, which is, you know, be part of a group of doing that. Um, so what we're doing is, first of all, we're creating a marketplace that, that, that combine you that experience. So you can, sometimes you can come because you want to buy and sell, sometimes you wanna, because you want to share, sometimes because you want to upload your collection, sometimes you want to just chat with someone. Um, and, and, and the natural way to build this marketplace is by, one, we develop a technology that allow you to listen to social network and say, where do you have a passionate community? Okay, so we, we listen to millions of, of conversations that happening in the public sphere, in, in, in Facebook and Twitter and in Instagram, we say, this product is a very hot product, there is a high level of conversation about it, there is a high level of demand, and so we know this is a community that's looking for a, a way to communicate. And then the second biggest problem or challenge for any marketplace is to create the first liquidity, the seeding problem. And, and what we're doing, we've actually been able to single out people that say they are looking to sell something, and we are aggregating them into a destination site where they can communicate with other people by buying and selling, plus giving them tools to, to have a full experience of their passion. So it's a bit of a different approach from what we see now. Right. So in essence, all of you guys are relying on big data, right? Big data and analysis of big data, or what we call big data analytics, is an underlying common denominator between all companies in the e-commerce space. Um, Ed, you've been in that space even before it was called, I mean, not you personally, but then 
with a nine-year-old baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, what, 10 years? How, how long has Evite been around? Since, uh, since 1998. Oh, sorry, it's like tw almost 20 years now, yeah? So you guys have been doing big data before the name existed, right? Um, any advice you can give anyone who's uh, relying on data and collection of big data for, for you know, their business and their, you know, for their growth? Yeah, I think um, one of the, the most valuable things, I think, uh, is understanding uh, the value of your own first party data. I think a lot of people, um, you know, there's, there's a huge industry, obviously, uh, where you can, you can use market research and you can rely on the third party data, but um, some of it tends to be paneled, some of it tends to be sampled, and frankly, it's not a competitive advantage because it's out there for everyone to buy. Um, one of the things that we do at Evite, uh, we think about what is, what is the value of our own uh, first party uh, information. So uh, incredibly qualified uh, for gifting, for example, because we know that uh, if you're going to a bachelor party, that's a very uh, different set of gifts uh, potentially than if you're going to a, a wedding or if you're going to a birthday party. So uh, I think it's very important to understand what it is exactly your users are telling you with their clicks and their behavior and understand what kind of assumptions you can draw and uh, how that can differentiate yourself in the marketplace. So we, we have to be very fortunate in that. Uh, we often say at Eva is that we know uh, where you're going to be, why you're going to be there, and when you're going to be there. Um, so that tends to be, um, you know, for us, a, a fairly good differentiator. But um, there's value, I think, in general, in the behavior uh, of your users. So um, that's pretty much, I, I can't tell you uh, specifically uh, what, what that value is without understanding the, the, uh, your own site's uh, users, but um, it's generally there, and I think it is more valuable necessarily. You don't always have to look to the sort of, uh, the, the giant uh, sort of third-party providers in the space. Anyone disagrees with that? I think you, you are actually analyzing other people's data in a way, right? So uh, uh, is there anything that you can add or, let's say, uh, disagree with what Eddie's saying? Um, no, everything is true. But there's, in the last couple of years, there's a tendency to abuse the term big data. Seriously? Uh, yeah. Haven't noticed that. Yeah, like growth hacking. Uh, so big, big data, so a lot of people are using the word big, the term big data to say I have a database and uh, that, that's not true. So we collect two terabytes a day and I'm not sure how big data that is. Like uh, Walmart, they have big data about the operations in, the, yeah. in their system. Amazon, they have big data and and basically what you, what you, there's a lot of companies that are collecting data just for the sake of collecting it. I'm not really sure how many let's say that uh, how many, what is the percentage of people that are actually making use out of their big data, the insights that you can create of them, uh, the, the models that you can actually use with, with those big data models. If so they have a nice collection, they can trade it, right? What? If they have a nice collection, they can trade it yeah. on Whisper. We, uh, we buy data all the time. Do you buy data from yeah. others? We buy data all the time, yeah. yeah. It's hard to keep up. It's a very I got some data. Let's talk afterwards. Let's talk um, later. So we have five men in the panel, unfortunately no women this session, um, three of which play, played rugby. So you're, um, you're strong people, right? But there's trends in the industry that uh, need to be uh, watched, overcome. There are big competitors, big players. I mean, we mentioned Amazon, we mentioned eBay, we mentioned Google, right? How are you guys, most of you startups? Yeah, you're all, I mean, can I call you by the startup? Is that like an uh, offensive? Sure. Yeah. yeah? 17 years old, yeah. At some point they graduate, right? Um, so uh, as, as up-and-coming companies in the industry, uh, how are you uh, planning to tackle and to, uh, to uh, try and compete or, you know, play along with the big guys? Uh, what have you, each of you, um, what have you guys learned from your work with the, with the likes of Amazon, Google, eBay, and what are you planning to change uh, in order to be able to, uh, to keep up with their innovation pace? Are you? Sure. Um, so we actually work with eBay. Uh, they're one of our customers. And um, the dif difference between eBay and Amazon is eBay is a marketplace, and it allows third-party sellers to sell over there. Amazon is a marketplace, and they're actually a seller as well. So about a third of the transactions on Amazon.com are being um, fulfilled by a uh, third party, or essentially that's, that's not Amazon. Um, when we work with eBay, there are, there are, and that's valid for any other companies, corporates and so on, there are so many teams and 
and um, it's just hard to get things done. So these guys know that when a nimble team comes, they, they have, maybe they have a good chance because it's an entire team that is focused on one sole prob problem. And um, that's why perhaps startups have, has merit in, in building such a solutions. And uh, corporates, are, they're slow. Just and, between us, no one yeah. is listening. Are you building this in order to get acquired by one of those guys? No. No, um, one of our <laughs> investors and uh, keeps reminding us, and uh, we also, I think it's uh, Ben Horvitz uh, wrote it in his book, um, Hard Thing About Hard Things. Uh, good companies being bought, not being sold. So you build, you build a great product, you, you build something that you see a vision, and if, if something happens, then it happens, but it's, you just cannot plan it to, you know, to get acquired because Right. It's just not the way it works. So none of you, while working with the big guys, thinks about, oh, they might actually come and buy me at some point, right? You can tell me. See, I'm not going to tell anyone, really. Anyone sees uh, working with, with the big guys differently? I mean, as a, more of a threat than an opportunity? Working with the big guys. Um, I'm not working with the big guys. So You're not yet. No, yeah. we are. So, no. <laughs> you want to say something? So working with the big guys, um, so we're, com we're similar web is now competing in uh, in a very interesting environment, because I guess that, uh, just in show of hands, how many people here heard about Alexa? Okay, nice. Uh, how many people heard about similar web before I showed up? So this is what we're competing with. We have, uh, with a lot of humility, we have the best data in the world in the competitive uh, intelligence world. But uh, Alexa is so far more, more known than us. Also, Compete.com, Hitwise, uh, Comscore, companies like that. And we're currently competing uh, on our brand name, trying to get our name out there as much as possible in many creati creative ways. And that's our main challenge. So a lot of times, we are working with big companies. We have, we have great partnerships with, with Google, uh, with, uh, with Yahoo. With, with companies in, in that scale because we want to be associated with them. We want to be per perceived as the company who work with Google, the company that Google is a natural partner to them. So this is why we partner with big companies, not in order to get acquired. It's also very hard to get acquired when your valuation is after a certain amount of money. You guys are too expensive, yeah. yeah. Um, that's not a lot of I, I see Sharona standing there with a bunch of gifts, which kind of, uh, it's gifting, right? Yeah, can I? She's a brilliant. Uh, can I have like a no thank you button? Yeah, I just want one more question, if that's okay. Is that okay? Okay, so um, any other comments on the big guys? Because we, we, we are trying to compete with the, to, not to compete, more to um, bring back an experience that used to have to the big guys. So if you're looking on eBay, it started from a niche marketplace when you had a person-to-person -person communication and this is how they grow. But if you're looking now, it's mainly about experience, big company sellers, that if you as an as a individual person want to sell something, you don't have the right, uh, you don't have the right score, you don't have the right, right. The, the right the number of, uh, of reviews, so nobody will see you. Right. And we're trying to get and bring back the experience when people want to communicate around a specific the product. The passion of selling, yeah. Exactly. So a uh, last question, and please take it whichever way you want. Um, uh, you know, everyone is talking about the looming downturn, you know, a change in, uh, in global economics, in the macro that might affect all of us, specifically startups and companies that are in the e-commerce and you know, online space. A, do you agree or do you see that differently? Do you think that everyone is just concerned for no good reason? And how are you preparing yourself for you know, the day where people will not be as enthused about buying stuff, about searching for stuff? Is that something that crosses your mind on a daily basis? Anyone? Um, it definitely does, especially when it comes to gifting. I can tell you it's, it's when it's hard to make someone take their wallet out and purchase something for themselves, it's twice as hard to make them do that same thing to buy it for someone else. Um, but I think at the end of the day, and it comes down, and I think it connects to your last question as well, um, it's about offering an added value to that, uh, to that user. Um, and even at a time where they would 
think twice about whether they're spending or they're going to buy something, uh, if you can give them another added value that makes their life a lot easier um, in terms of that action that they're about to take, um, I think that is something that when you offer that, that can uh, definitely make it a lot easier for them and for you and, and obviously uh, uh, make us worry less about those issues. Ed. Yeah, I would say that, um, do we think about it? Certainly, I mean, you know, when time, we are an invitation company. When times, are, when times are good, people tend to get together more. But you don't stop having birthdays just because there's a recession. Um, I think it's important to be nimble, um, you know, and if you can uh, provide, like, uh, like Shaw was saying, if you can provide value um, for, uh, that, that match the times and service, that you can, you can compete at maybe uh, in times of downturn and sort of a down market of products. Um, and so I don't think that, um, I don't think celebrations or gifting or even purchasing is going away anytime, anytime soon. So uh, I think the important thing is just being able to, be, to, to create the marketplace uh, to capture those purchases and then to capture a percentage of those purchases. So. Famous last words. Okay. Um, typically, that's the point in time I'll be all opening it up to the audience, but uh, I, I really want to make it to the next session. So uh, this was a threatening uh, move. So uh, unfortunately, we'll wrap things up right now. Uh, I do hope that you'll stick around uh, for next session and also be able to speak with these guys offline because they're awfully interesting. And I, I was not unable to tap into all of the insights they, uh, they can bring. So please take the opportunity to speak to everyone later. And with that, I want to thank you and uh, you know, Sharona, please do your thing. Thank you very much, uh, which is because we, we require that you learn history here at the Israel Conference, and that especially the history of Israel. And this is the famous cartoonist from the 1950s, the satirist, who, uh, who was very popular, and, uh, and it's in a gift package because this is the buyout session. And I want to thank you very much for teaching us how to buy better so that we're not friars. And I always get the best price, by the way. <laughs> Even if it takes me four hours to research it, I will find the lowest number. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. If we could get a quick picture with our wonderful photographer.